Okay, in this video, we're going to be looking at collisions. And collisions are an interesting topic because you have to consider both momentum, which we covered earlier in the lecture, and energy. Both of them have to be considered together when you're considering the different types of collisions. So basically, there are three types of collision. There is what you call an elastic collision, there is an inelastic collision, and really there's only two. There's elastic and inelastic, but there's a special case of inelastic collisions called a perfectly inelastic collision. And so uh, often we consider it as three types, but really it's just two. Now, I'll be honest, I like a lot of things about the textbook we're using in this course, but the way that it describes the difference between elastic and inelastic collisions isn't exactly right. And I don't, I don't like, that's one little thing about the book I don't like. So I want to give you a correct definition of the different types of collision. And so for an elastic collision, So the first one we're going to talk about is the elastic collision curve. And if you have a, a collision, so, so first of all, what does it mean for things to collide? Things smack together, right? So I've got a ball going this way. It's got some mass. It's got some velocity. What does that mean? It means it's going to have a momentum, m times v, and it's going to have a kinetic energy, one-half m v squared. And then you have another mass over here moving with the V in the same direction, for example, and what's going to happen to those two masses? They're going to collide. And when they collide, the momentum and the energy are going to transfer from one ball to another. And how that process happens is, you know, something that's very useful to understand about. But it can happen in a way that's what we call elastic and in a way that's what we call inelastic. So here's the distinction. For an elastic collision, the momentum is conserved, and the kinetic energy is conserved. In other words, they are both conserved. Now for an in elastic collision, only the momentum is conserved. Now, how can you tell if the momentum and the kinetic energy are both conserved in a problem or if only the momentum is conserved? Well, you've got each ball has its momentum and its kinetic energy before the collision, and then after the collision, they're going to be going off with some different velocities, maybe even in different directions. But again, they're still going to have their own momentum and their own energy. So to see if they're conserved, what you do is you add up all the momentums before and all the momentums after and see if you get the same number. Then you add up all the kinetic energies before and all the kinetic energies after, and you see if you get the same number. If the total momentum before equals the total momentum after, it's conserved. If the total kinetic energy before equals the total kinetic energy after, of all the parts added together, then it's conserved. If you get a different number when you add them all up, then it's not conserved. It's really that simple. Now, there's this other special case that we call a perfectly inelastic collision. And that's when two things collide and they stick together. Imagine I've got two balls of clay and they're thrown towards one another, but when they stick, you end up with one big lump of clay going off at some velocity. That, the two objects have stuck together, that guarantees you that it must be an inelastic collision. You don't even have to check. You don't have to add up the momenta or the kinetic energies to see if they're conserved. You know the momentum is going to be conserved, but the kinetic energy is not. And so that's why they call it a perfectly inelastic collision. So we can look at some 
uh, different cases of different types of collision. Um, one of the things, so I've got two possibilities here. There's a green ball that's moving towards a yellow ball that is initially not moving. It's at rest. And we're going to assume that these balls are the same size, the same mass. And what happens is that when they collide, the green ball hits the yellow ball, which is stationary. The green ball stops and the yellow ball goes on. You might have seen this actually happen if you've ever played pool or billiards before, where the cue ball comes in and it strikes one of the other balls, and the cue ball stops dead in its tracks, and the other ball goes on. Basically, in this case, this yellow ball has stolen the momentum of the green ball. And so the momentum hits, and this guy gets transferred, and so that is the way that that can happen. Now, another thing that can happen is the two balls can collide going head on with one another. And so the, this, the yellow ball is moving and the green ball is moving towards one another. They collide and they can bounce off one another. Now, this guy has a positive momentum because it's in the positive direction. This guy has a negative momentum because the arrow is pointing in a negative direction. After the collision, that's backwards. This guy now has a negative momentum, and this guy has a positive momentum. Now, after the collision, the numbers of each momentum can be different, but when you add them up, you're going to get the same value. I add this green plus this yellow before the collision. I add the momentum of this green and this yellow after the collision. Whatever number I get here is going to be the same number there. Now, if it is an elastic collision, when I add up the energies in the same way, one half mv squared for all of the balls, that also will be conserved. The total energy before will equal the total energy after. Here's another possibility that can happen. So here I've got the green ball and the yellow ball are going in the same direction. The green ball is moving faster. So it, see the arrow is bigger showing that it's going faster. This guy's momentum is bigger, so it overtakes the yellow ball and it collides. And what happens in that collision is actually the green ball will transfer some of its momentum to the yellow ball. The green ball will slow down and the yellow ball will speed up. But again, the momentum is going to be conserved in that collision. And if it is an elastic collision, the energy will be conserved as well. What if it's an inelastic collision? The momentum is still going to be conserved, but the energy won't be. Now here we have an example of a perfectly inelastic collision. Remember, that's when the two things collide and they stick together. Like the two balls of clay struck each other and they merged and form one bigger ball of clay. Here I've got two identical train cars. One's stationary, its velocity is zero. The other is moving 10 meters per second, and they collide, and they lock together, so they go off as one thing. Now, for simple, for simplicity, let's say that each of these cars, that, that we can say this is for a toy train, each car has a kilogram mass. So each car weighs a kilogram, or has a kilogram's mass. So what's the momentum before the collision? We've got the... Momentum of the orange car is going to be M orange V orange, and you add to that the momentum of the green car, so that's the mass of the green times the velocity of the green, and what's that equal to? Well, we know that the velocity of the green is zero because it's at rest, and so that whole term cancels away and we're left with the total momentum of this system before the collision is the mass of the orange car, which is one kilogram, times the velocity, which is 10 meters per second. So M orange V orange is equal to 10 kilogram meters per second, and that's the total momentum that you have before the collision. Now, after the collision, we've only got one mass, but it's a kilogram here 
plus a kilogram there. And so that gives you two kilograms of total mass. And so the total momentum after is going to be two kilograms times V final. And what's that got to equal to? It's got to equal to 10 kilogram meters over seconds. And so to solve for V, I divide both sides by two and I get my final velocity is going to be 10 kilogram meters per second divided by two kilograms. And that gives me a final velocity of five meters per second. 10 divided by two gives me five. And we can also see that that kilogram there is gonna cancel with kilograms there. So I get 10 divided by two, which is five, and my units are left as meters per second, which is what we would expect for a velocity. And again, this is for a perfectly inelastic collision where the things stick together. Generally in these problems, you've got the two individual momentums added together before the collision equals the momentum of the one stuck together thing after the collision. And then the V is usually what you don't know and you just have to do a little algebra to solve for it.